much. Um, and tonight's uh, not unlike any night uh, that I've spent or any outing I've spent with uh, Daryl Green over the last 25 or 30 years. Uh, many events, and we had the same thing happen. And Tyson's a, a week or two ago at the One Two Three Club. Only I got to be the speaker instead of Daryl. And but anyway, I walk in and I'm talking with a couple people, or and they kind of walk up, and it's like, I kind of know you. I think you played for the Redskins. I think but you were 20 something. And inevitably, Daryl will walk in the room, and all of a sudden it'll be like, Daryl Green. <laughs> They all, there they all go, and that's exactly what happened tonight, and it happens every night. And I'm okay because there are stars and there are meteors in this world, and that's a star, and I'm okay being a, media, a meteor. But uh, anyway, it's great to be here with you tonight. I want to thank the D.C. Touchdown Club. Thank you for all you do for football and sports in the D.C. region. Uh, congratulations to uh, all of our recipients tonight, award winners. Uh, Vern, thank you so much for all the memories. We really appreciate you so much. One more round of applause for Vern Marcus. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I've had a lot of great gifts in my life, and certainly two of those uh, athletically. One uh, certainly was playing for the great Joe Gibbs. Um, what an amazing coach, and, and when we go out and try to hire coaches, I always start there with that profile. Uh, the other was getting an opportunity uh, to play with our um, award winner tonight, Daryl Green. Uh, you all got to see the things that he did on the field. Rice, Michael Irvin. Um, Randy Moss, those kind of things. You got to see that sun every Sunday. But I had the great gift of watching this man compete every single day in practice. And we talk about student athletes uh, at George Mason and wherever I've been, we talk about bringing it every day. And let me tell you, athletically, he was a man that brought it every single day and every single thing that he did from the minute he walked out of the locker room and practice to the point we'd be out there for the rest of us just warming up, doing warm-up drills, backpedal drills, you know where the coach is moving the ball back and forth. And, and Daryl's out. The rest of us are just trying to warm up. And Daryl's like to Emmett Thomas, uh, get the ball by me. Get the ball by me. You can't get the ball by me. And I'm like, the guy could just throw the ball over your head, Daryl, and, and be that easy. He's like, he can't get the ball by me. He can't get the ball by me. We'd go to one-on-ones, and there's Art Monk, a Hall of Famer. Gary Clark, Ricky Sanders, two other guys that should be in the NFL Hall of Fame. And he's just lining up like, okay, I'm just telling you, you're not going to catch a ball today. I'm going to shut you down. I'm like, this guy is shutting down. Our, and he'd go do it. We'd go to seven on seven. Same thing. Team, every single day, this guy's motor burned, and he just brought it every single day. And now, he, had a, he could have a bad side to him, too. You know, you, one of the great things I got to do or, or – sometimes it was great, sometimes not so great, was get to run the huddle uh, for the Redskins and, and make all the calls. Now, sometimes because Daryl was so great and he was the kind of player he was, you, you'd forget about him. You know, you just didn't ever worry about Daryl. But you let me not get a call out sometimes, and he'd be, I'd hear him over there screaming like, get the call out, get the call out. Finally, one day I looked over there, we were playing Denver, Denver Broncos, and I looked over there and I said, why don't you just handle your side of the field and the other 10 of us will handle our side of the field and you can see his mind just doing the math and he just starts laughing and or hit him in the back once just don't you know let that happen and he's he still it doesn't uh fail to remind me of the times I hit him in the back and tackling people and I'd say I think I thought you were fast Daryl you could get out of the way but he uh you just don't do that don't hit him in the back don't miss a call but he uh and and so much of my career I owe to Daryl Green. Um, certainly where I am now at George Mason, my first day at Redskin Park in 1990 as a free agent. I come in, we work out. We, in March of 1990, we do our off-season workout there, have our meetings. Meetings end about noon, and I'm thinking, okay, I've got to go somewhere to, to run, find a track somewhere. Um, and Daryl walks by, and, and he says, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm thinking about it, I'm going to try to go find a track or somewhere to do some speed work, work, work. And he goes, well, we all go to George Mason's track, and we work out on that track, and we run the hill that's uh, still outside of our, my office right now. And so he said, come with me. And, and that was when the great Daryl Green tells you to come with him, you get in the car and you go with him. Now, that was my second or third year in the league, and I kind of always prided myself on, on outworking other people. And I said, okay, I'm going to get out there, and I'm going to teach these 
redskin guys, you know, they think they've won a couple Super Bowls. I think I'm going to teach them how to work. So we, we get out there on the track, and, and Daryl, I'm kind of like, okay, what are we going to do? And he starts describing the track workout just as the warm-up piece, which is a workout in and of itself. And I'm like, okay, there's more to this thing. He said, now we go over to this hill, and we run. I'm like, well, how many of these hills are we going to run? And I remember some number like 80, and I'm like, what would you say? You want to come again? Did you say 80? Yeah, we can do it out here on, in the off season. We can. It'll be a piece of cake on Sundays. And so we ran 80 some hills. I mean, this guy wore me out, but it changed my life in my career that day. When Daryl Green said, come with me, my eyes opened up to a greater gear that I had, and I never knew I had. And that's what he's done his whole life. And fast forward to Super Bowl 26, we're out there in the first quarter of that game and Jim Kelly and, and the K-Gun offense is trying to get going and, and I'll never forget Richie Pettibone calls a he calls a 45 jet open eye filter switch which is nothing but a, a five man dog Thurman a blitz from the open side away from the tight end we we were using Kurt Gavay our middle linebacker to occupy Thurman Thomas so that uh, Andre could come off the, the side we're playing man free Daryl's covering um uh, Andre Reed in the slot. Sure enough, it happens. Thurman Thomas steps up. Andre Collins comes off the edge, rushes Jim Kelly. He throws the ball. Daryl reaches back, tips it. Of course, it lands softly in my hands for my. But that's a, and that's the kind of teammate he was. Gift wrapping something for a teammate uh, in the greatest game of his life. And so, not too long ago, he reminded me of that. Uh, and, I, and I said, well, the irony is that he gave me essentially that first interception. And uh, I said, well, the irony is not lost on me that Jim Kelly was throwing at you and not me. Uh, but uh, he just didn't know what he was doing. Don't they come out and when they see, a, see some heat coming off the side, they look for the weakest matchup or something? No, but uh, Daryl was just, just phenomenal. And his statistics are you know, just truly incredible from uh, Hall of, the NFL Hall of Fame, um, Super Bowls, Pro Bowls, NFL's fastest man, um, 54 career interceptions, a 20-year career. It is just without parallel. Uh, and certainly one of the greatest athletes, not just in this country over the last 100 years, but throughout the world and the planet. I mean, he's really been that kind of athlete. But for as great of an athlete as he has been on the field, he has been 100 times that person off the field. He has truly been a Hall of Famer in the impact that this man has had in the community throughout his life through the Daryl Green Youth Life Foundation, the after school centers, the tens of thousands of young people that he not only touches at George Mason University right now, but throughout this country every single day, and that will be without measure. Uh, so it gives me great uh, joy, and it is a great honor to introduce a man who has lived a life worth living and is a man that young people, this is who they should emulate. Not, not anybody else, but the Daryl Greens of the world. And so I'm honored just to introduce you, to uh, work with you, to call you a colleague and a brother. And I love you like a, like a friend and a, and a family. So please join me in welcoming the great Daryl Green.